coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. Today, we're cruising down the Candy Cane Lane in Kingfisher. It's that time. It's the Kingfisher Winter Nights. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. I love Christmas lights. I think we've expressed that on a previous show. And I want to start, I know we normally jump right in. I want to say I like what your little town's doing. They're kind of sprinkling in some light displays to kind of lead you to the the bigger display. You're talking about Chickasha? Yeah. We're supposed to be talking about Kingfisher. I know, I know, but I love Christmas lights. I do too. They're not all created equally. There can only be one Chickasha lights, and there's only one Kingfisher Winter Nights. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about winter nights. I'm yes. just saying, I love what you. I love what you've done with the place. We need to do another Chickasha show. We do, uh, yeah, because they've done. They've added some things. They've, they have. You know, we, we'll do. I think we can squeeze one in. I think we can as well. But let's let's get back to Kingfisher Winter Nights. Right. It has been ranked as one of the top ten displays in the state. And there are a lot of displays in that. That's a lot. You're in some tall cotton. You know, I think combined, if you added all the the lights in the top ten, there's like a gazillion lights to be it to be perched among the top ten in the state. Yes, you know I don't like to do you you dog me for doing the Mount Rushmore stuff because you can't do a Mount Rushmore of Christmas light displays, but we can do a top ten and they're there. <laughs> there are a bunch of them. Yes. So uh, you alluded to it in the intro, Candy Cane Lane. Mm-hmm. They, they have their their drive area. It's set up really nice. Yeah, I, it's one of those things where it kind of turns you into a kid a little bit. It. How do you not? I, I, these are one of those. I, I've said it before. I can go through these alone and not feel guilty enough about not bringing my kids. <laughs> I love it so much. I don't want to listen to my kids cry. <laughs> no, I I spent some time with your kids last night. And <laughs> they do. They cry. They cry a lot. Yes, but Candy Lane Cane, uh, Candy Lane Cane, Candy Lane Lane. So that's really hard. Candy, Candy Lane Lane, Candy Cane Lane, Candy Cane Lane. So if you say it, you have to have it, you have to use a a rhythm. Candy Cane Lane. <laughs> you can drive through Candy Cane yep. Lane, or you can park and walk through their lighted arches. Kind of weaves in and out of. 60 different lighted displays. Oh, cool, yeah. Some of them are animated. Throughout the weekends, mm-hmm. during the month of December, they have a lot of special children craft events. Mm-hmm. Some of the highlights sure. that that people definitely want you to check out while you're there, they have their famous swinging bridge spanning Uncle John's Creek. You can walk across oh, that. Cool. This is a bridge from 1903. I don't know if I trust a swinging bridge from the early 19th century. Uh, yeah, but one, <laughs> one of the views here, you're talking about this is over water. This is true. So you've got thousands of lights reflecting off of the water. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's gorgeous. And a thousand ways to die. Like, I could drown doing something I love. Which I guess I'm, I can think of worse things, worse ways to die and not doing something I love at all. <laughs> I'll take my chances. So a, a lot of family traditions. Sure. Uh, people go out there to take family photos on the swinging bridge to use for their Christmas cards. I think it's a good idea. Something they they also do is kind of an interesting twist. They do a safari scavenger hunt with prizes as well. Now you can pick up a copy of the scavenger hunt. It's available at the swing bridge, bridge entrance and also at the drive through entrance. You you spot animal displays. You you can check those off the list. Return for with you know with your name and phone number to get a chance for some free ice cream. It's a cool little activity. It is, and they also do like a weekly drawing for a gift basket of Christmas goodies. See? I think it's a great idea. Now, something that Kingfisher does that I, I have not seen anywhere else. What? They have heated tents to warm yourself up on the when it gets really cold. How about, can we get a tent that cools you off? I, I, I'm thinking we're going to need misting tents before Christmas. <laughs> what is happening? It's... Not, no, it's, it's not any. You're going to say it's it's common. It's not. Were you going to say it's common? No, I was going to say it's not exactly hot right now. It's going to be seventy degrees on Christmas Day, and I'm going to cry. It's I just, not going to be seventy degrees on Christmas Day. I promise you, we are going to have some ice. You think? Yes. Okay. It's going to get cold. So anyway, heated tents. I, it's a great concept. Last year, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tell. I think we're paying for it. I think 
we're getting our comeuppance for for having a hundred year winter in a single season. We're still twenty days away from Christmas. Yeah, but we're how many days away from winter? What is it? This twenty second? Is that when winter is? I think it's something like that. It's like the middle, the middle to the latter part of December. Winter starts. It doesn't even feel like it's even coming. Look at some of the trees. You've got leaves over here, and the guys over here are like, dude, it's. It's winter. You're supposed to not have leaves. It's like, no, it's not. It's still seven degrees. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, heat a tent's a good idea. I don't think I'm going to be in it, though. You're too hot. They also have an ice skating rink. To help you have those cold thoughts. Chilly thoughts. <laughs> For sure. Um, <laughs> on weekends, they also have food trucks and mm. live holiday music, which I think should be mandatory. I think it should be mandatory. Holiday music everywhere. Live holiday music. There are lots of musicians that need work. So oh, yeah. I don't understand why we don't have more musicians playing Frosty the Snowman yeah. with, a, with a guitar case in front of them for tips. Tell me right now, if you put a little boy playing drummer boy on a little drum by himself, that he wouldn't have to have a, a Brinks truck come pick up the money. <laughs> I would pay I would pay money to see watch a kid play an instrument. Especially it's it's literally the little drummer boy. You're gonna say no. To one of the most heralded characters in Christmas music. I think it's a spot where we kind of miss the boat. And I don't know why. There are lots of musicians in the state of Oklahoma. I can turn into a talent scout slash agent overnight. I got a, I got a million dollar idea. But it'd be it, it's straight up exploitation. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm cashing in on the drummer boy concept. Well, I think if you cash in on the drummer boy concept, that Santa is probably going to skip you. He's going to frown frown on the idea. Yes, but he can be found mm -hmm. at Kingfisher Winter Nights. You can uh, often find him on the train, which yeah. we didn't bring up. They have train rides through the park, and you can grab a hot chocolate. I like the. I love train rides and hay rides and hot chocolate. All those, all those little amenities that just kind of make you feel like. A kid. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing that I like about Christmas displays, you can, there's tons of picture opportunities. And most places like this one, it's donations. They accept donations. Yes, they, there is no charge to get in. They do accept donations. And those are you, those donations are used to maintain the lights and yeah. to add additional lights uh, in future years. So definitely if you can spare it, then please do. But yeah, definitely check out Kingfisher Winter Nights. You know, as far as Kingfisher goes, there are a few facts, interesting that, facts that no you else. may not you may not know about Kingfisher. Lay it on me. Let's see. The town was named for an early resident who had also had several landmarks named after him. Right. But a man named Kingfisher. King was his first name. Kingfisher. Yes. Wow, that's pretty cool. But this one, I had no idea. Okay. One of my favorite companies, a company that has taken loads of money from me. The Coleman Company was founded in Kingfisher by W.C. Coleman in the year 1900. I had no idea. None. And you're the king of Coleman. Dude, I'm and telling you. didn't you, know. I had no clue. If you didn't know, there's I, there's a damn sure 98.9% .9 chance I didn't know either. Now we both... I was 44 years old when I learned that fact. I was 10 when I learned that Plano ta Tackle Boxes from, were from Plano, Texas. It makes sense now. It all makes sense now. It's all coming together. Uh, Kingfisher is also home to the Chisholm Trail Museum, which preserves relics and has information about the community's unique heritage. If you're in the area, you may as well check out the Chisholm Trail Museum. Well, there you go. Definitely something to check out for sure. And coming up, we're going to talk about oh, we're going to talk about jobs. You know, one thing I'm seeing right now is everybody's kind of. I know some people are doing some promotional stuff in it. It's almost like there's this last push towards the end of the year. We're let's get, we're going to give out some T-shirts because I know a couple people that are doing it. Mm -hmm. We're giving out T-shirts. It's you're getting stocking stuffers for your clients and things like that. I can't think of honestly, and we say this all the time, and I'm not making it up. Who better somebody than somebody local Absolutely. that's going to have that quick turnaround? And of course, we're referring to Master Threads. Yes, if you need decorated caps, T-shirts, or any promotional gear. Master Threads can embroider or screen print your logo onto anything. anything. Absolutely anything. And really, it starts with you. you got to call for that free quote. It's 405 
get a free quote or find them on the internet at masterthreads.us. So, Harley, we talked, we kind of touched on it, the subject last night. A lot of places hiring, it gives you the, if on from the outside, everybody, all these now hiring signs would indicate that nobody, we can't put anybody back to work, but perhaps it's, perhaps perception isn't reality. Yeah, I'm going to say that um, it looks like we're kicking butt as yeah. a state. This is from the Oklahoma State Newsroom. Oklahoma remains open for business as Im- unemployment rates drop to the third lowest percentage in the nation. Mm-hmm. Dude, they have new figures released from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics that show October 2021 unemployment rate was had declined to 2.7%, and this is the third lo- lowest in the nation but more importantly, it's the lowest that it's been since 1976. That's 45 years. That's a long time. And to just considering what we've been through, the ebbs and flows and the peaks and valleys, you know, you look at everything that happened in 2008 and how we've kind of kind of coasted along through the pandemic. We're doing fine, Oklahoma. <laughs> you know, I mean, not to be cliche, but yeah, no, 100%. There's a quote from Governor Stitt. He said that while low unemployment is great news, we must continue to expand and train Oklahoma's workforce so businesses will remain able to attract the employees they need and our economy continues to grow. Now, as much as we kind of poo-poo minimum wages going up, I think we're, in, I think, incentivizing returning to work and returning to some sense of normal. You know, you've seen a lot of places that, you know, we're paying $10 an hour last year, we're paying $15 an hour. Take it for what it is, whatever whatever your opinion is on that. I think it, at least where even where I work, you know, we have, we're dropping people like flies, and then we increase the the wage a little bit, and all of a sudden your level of what can I tolerate is increased. Right. You know what I mean. So mm-hmm. I think making it uh, having competitive wages. I'm not saying pay everybody twenty five dollars an hour, but I think having competitive wages will kind of. I mean, it was inevitable just based on the the moves of the country that yeah. wages in Oklahoma would go up. But more importantly, we've been very flexible as a state, and it shows. And we're making some real good strides. And I love all of the work that we're doing around the tourism industry. Absolutely, it's you know, and now that they've opened the first Americans Museum, there's a huge draw to Oklahoma. There's more another pocket of jobs created for. Uh, for local, it's just better for the local infrastructure. But you know what? You know what's not cheap? Running a podcast. <laughs> um, no, it's we don't not. make fifteen dollars an hour to run the show. Uh, no, we lose about fifteen dollars an hour. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> we give everything that we give you is free. It is, and one of the things that we ask in return, uh, as a listener of the show, we would love to know what you want us to cover. Give us some inside information. Send us some pictures of, of adventures that you've had around the state to help us, you know, find our next show or find some hidden gems that we didn't know existed. One of the cool things about doing this show and listening to shows similar is I'll never forget the first time I heard Oklahoma City mentioned in on a national stage, not the NBA, but like listening to them mention Oklahoma and it didn't refer to us as, you know, as the Great Plains, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or hearing about your favorite thing on on the internet, it's just cool to hear it. So if you want us to say your cool thing, you want to hear us talk about your famous hot dogs, because I love hot dogs, I'll talk about it. Hit us up. This has been the Only an OK Show. I am Harley. And I'm Brett. And we're out of here. Peace. emotionally bankrupt salesman. I mean, I would buy it if I had the money. You clearly have better credit. What did I say to... Did I say... Oh, I did say it to you about... Never mind. I already said it to you. Oh, no. Maybe I told Tara. I said, um... I said, Mason... Did, well, maybe it was you. Anyway, I said, Mason has a better credit score and a higher blood sugar than me. <laughs> what, do, what do you think? I would give at this moment. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> Do you remember that song? <laughs> <laughs> uh,
Check, check, check. Why do you sound so hollow? Because I've had my soul. Uh, you're not on the microphone. Okay. You're not on the microphone. Hi. That's better. Hello. Hi. It's the holiday season. And boop de boop and diddly bop. Hey, I have a question. Only if it's legitimate. I overheard a conversation and I need verification. Plant based. You guys are becoming vegans. We are going to try. So I work with a guy. His name is Mark. Nice, nice, nice guy. And just over the course of a year and a half, I've kind of gotten to know him a little bit better and found out he went vegan, plant-based, whatever, however you want to call it. And he said straight up, him and his wife were looking for a change. They were both aching. You know, she's considerably younger than he is, probably by about 20 years. So, but they're both, you know, got the growing pains, da 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 They invested in going to a seminar in Dallas. They're like, we got, we've got money. We've got skin in the game. We're going to go check it out. It's the author. Going to find it was the author of uh, Forks Over Knives. Heard of the book? I'm sure you have. Uh, no, I'm, I don't follow any uh, cult <laughs> <Okay>. writings. <laughs> Anyways. But they also kind of got introduced to some of the documentaries that we've watched about the, about the, 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 so anyway. Factory farming. Factory farming. So after walk, going to the, the seminar, they literally came straight home, called their neighbor, said, got a freezer full of meat, come and get it, and they just started it. They've been doing it for, I think he said like seven or eight years now, hardcore. He said he slowly kind of let some of the seafoods in, but he'll have turkey once a year, ham once a year, you know, the Christmas thing, the, the Easter thing, or whatever. And I you know, got to talking to him about it. He's like, yeah, I'm, I know it's extreme, because I love barbecue. Like, I literally just made what... Jarrett would call, he literally said it's the best ribs ever had. And I was like, man, this feels good. And I'll never be able to cook this again. But we're, we're going to try it. We're going to at least try it. We've got the cookbook in. We're waiting on the uh, Forks Over Knife book. And then something else is coming with it. So, yeah, we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. There's got to be some benefit to it or people wouldn't do it. I mean, there are professional athletes that do it. You know what I mean? What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> I, I, you don't think I can do it. No, I, it's not that I don't think you... A, I don't think you could do it. But B, it's like you told me that you're going to be a Scientologist. But I also think you could say the but same hey, about... You, you know, Tom Cruise, he's not as crazy as everybody no, says. No, no. But there's there are, there's got to be some... And we'll read the book and find out if it's if it's for us or not. It's a cult. Well, I'll, I think that how the same gets be said by people that only eat meat. There are bi- there are so very but, few. but here's the thing though I'm not saying we're gonna I'm, I told her I said here's I don't want to be the kind of people that are like well we made a we grilled watermelon to look like ham <laughs> I'm not doing it because the minute I start trying to make that look like something I know that you know what I mean I'm out I saw a video of a of a vegan girl making bacon mm-hmm. out of banana peels see no and a to start off with, that is disgusting. Mm-hmm. And if you want bacon, eat bacon. Right. But really, the thing that bothered me more than anything else, I saw what she put into it, and I promise you, it's healthier and better for the environment just to eat bacon. Right. Like, she put so many chemicals in that stuff. Yeah, you gotta put these, I don't know, what you gotta put in image. It was all kinds of just weird, like. Liquid smoke yeah, and yeah, yeah. like 17 different spices and like We're canola not, oil. And, I think, I don't, I don't, again, and I, if I, if I'm not gonna eat bacon, I'm not gonna eat bacon. I, for one, I'm not, I really shouldn't be eating red meat because of having the diabetes thing and hopefully getting, my goal is to get a, I'm not so far in that I have like a pump on me that, you know, give, gives me insulin. I take 10 mils or 20 mils a day or 10, 20 units a day, which is relatively low dose. We're just going to take a look at it and investigate. If it's not for us, we're not going to do it. Okay. Three, two, one. Three, two, one.